I think the most important elements of the presentation that it's it's time to move, it's time to do something, it's time to try. I, I ended the presentation by saying the best way to predict the future is to shape your own future and to start doing something, trying something, finding out what works best for your passengers on board your airline. And that's honestly true. And very bluntly said, it doesn't even matter what you try as long as you develop a habit of, of trying, of testing, of finding out what's new. Because disruption is coming. Disruption has already arrived, as we can see in in-flight sales. And what I talked about during my presentation as well is that there's disruption for the in-flight entertainment as well. I put in one sheet and I bluntly said, listen, in-flight entertainment is great, but my Netflix at home is better. I honestly still think it's true, and I met a lot of people after the presentation that say, yeah, mine as well. <laughs> well, so that is already, I think, one of the best elements of, of proof that disruption is there. And it will come on many other areas as well. And there are a lot of touch points, if you look again as a passenger at the in-flight journey, that you would say, listen, this is really odd from a passenger perspective, from a nowadays passenger perspective. And we should all develop a habit of rethinking those elements. Whether it's entertainment, whether it's shopping, whether it's consumption or buying of food and beverages on board, there are a lot of elements that we do in a certain way nowadays that are not that logic anymore as when they were invented. We help airlines um, rethink the in-flight commerce and entertainment part that they bring to their passengers. Uh, back in the days, we would of course shop uh, using the great in-flight magazine and we would select items that would bring revenue to the airline. It would be great for brands because a lot of people would use the magazine, maybe not necessarily to shop, but as entertainment. They would enjoy an hour just to go through the magazine and see the great products, read, ad, read the, the advertisements in, in the magazine. Um, but nowadays you see both disappearing. People aren't interested anymore in, in the offer that's in the magazine because they found out that maybe it's easier to get these products elsewhere and have them delivered to your home address. Maybe it's more affordable for certain products to buy them online. Um, and the entertaining factor then also disappears because people leave the magazine where it is and, and don't touch it anymore. So we're helping airlines in a process uh, to, to find out what other ways they can deploy to get new revenue out of the passengers already in their seats and also to bring a little bit more commercial entertainment back to these passengers. At the moment the main airports that we work with are Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, uh, Singapore Airport and Dubai Airport. Um, and at the same time we work with many, with many uh, smaller airports as well, uh, trying to develop uh, ways for them to regain the, uh, let's say, commercial revenue that they're not getting in anymore because people spend less at the airport. What we see happening, and, and luckily most airports are pretty open about this, this trend, let's say, in their, in their annual reports as well, what we see happening is that uh, year after year, passengers spend less in the retail stores of the airport. So the spend per passenger actually goes down. Now that's three, four, maybe five percent per year, which is um, uh, maybe not considered to be that much, but if it happens year after year, it becomes quite a considerable amount. Of course, we see at the same time people eat a little bit more, there's more restaurant spend, F&B spend, but for most airports, those two aren't in balance and they see the total commercial revenue going down. Now, we see it as our task as air commerce to help airports and airlines as well, which see a, a similar effect, recoup that, let's say, commercial revenue that they're not getting anymore from their existing passengers. And we do it in a range of, of, of innovative and creative ways, using digital tools that we develop in-house or uh, develop together with partners, and using the, the physical experiential tools that we bring to market. It was Air Commerce that pioneered the idea, and I, th I think we're still pioneering the idea because, let's be honest, it's, it's not widespread and, and, and available on board each and every airline. Some airlines say it's complicated because you'll have to find a way how to bring these products, let's say, up in the air and distribute them to passengers. 
other airlines say it's a solution for, for a, a, a challenge that they have on board and are already starting to develop the logistics behind it to actually make this a normal standard practice. Uh, we developed it together with partners, together with brand partners that said, listen, we as a brand would really love to have this experience uh, in the hands of passengers that are, that are flying. And of course, we're developing it, uh, developing it together with, uh, with airline partners as well. And that last part, developing, developing it together with airline partners, is really bespoke. It's really a one-on-one a, a -on -one because in the end of the day, for each airline, it's a different, a different process. If I look at the one I'm, I'm most excited about at the moment, that would be airportpopup.com. It's a global marketplace where we bring together supply and demand for pop-ups at airports. And that's something that's truly special because up until now, if you as an airport would want to have a pop-up activation, maybe some, several activations, pop-up stores or brand experiences, that could be very difficult because you would have the space available, but then you have to go out and, 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 and find brands to do these activations at your airport. You have to step into the commercial uh, process of, of telling these brands what the cost would be and how it would work. The other way around, if you are a brand and you would like to do uh, pop-up activations at airports because you want to reach passengers that have time, money to spend and an ear to listen, then it's quite complicated to find out at which airports you would be able to do these pop-ups because most likely you would like to do them at one, two, three or even more airports if possible simultaneously because you're launching a, a new product, let's say, at a specific moment. Now to take away these difficulties and these imperfectnesses, let's say, in, in, in the world of airport pop-ups, we've launched the airportpopup.com uh, website, which very easily allows airports to, to list and to make visible which spaces they have available, what the costs are, how many people pass by this space, and at the same time allows brands to very easily see where they can find pop-up spaces at airports that match their demands and their desires. I would say that the key challenges for us to develop and market our product is adoption. In all honesty, and I think we're all aware of that, the airline industry isn't the most innovative, uh, innovative industry when it comes to at least my part of, of the airline industry, which is the commercial part. Many players in the industry still find it far more easy to think about what they were doing yesterday and repeat and then expect they'll have the same effects and benefits of that as they had in the past. Now, of course, we all know that's not the way the world works. Consumers change, passengers change, but still the adoption of innovation, the, the willingness to try, I would say is one of the biggest hurdles for us to bring innovation to airlines, commercial innovation, that is, in our case.